Welcome to Behind the Scenes. I am your host, Hector Montalvo. This show is dedicated to asking tough questions for you, the viewers. We bring you their responses, and we let you decide. Today's show is based on the many emails and phone calls this show has received in regards to the recent ruling involving the Methuen Police Chief Joe Solomon versus the City of Methuen. Many of you have asked this show to look into this and ask questions so that you can decide who should be held accountable. We have invited former and current city councilors to appear on this show to answer your questions. We are pleased to announce that current city councilors Sean Fountain, Tom Schuler, and Ron Marchand have agreed to appear on next week's show. We will also be inviting the solicitor along with the chairperson of the council to appear on this show to answer your questions. We will bring you their responses once we hear back from them. Joining us today at our MCTV studios, former East District Councilor Ms. Pat Uliano and current West District Councilor Ms. Jean Papalato. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you, Hector. Thanks for having us. This Chief Solomon case has been in the papers now and it's been ongoing for the city of Methuen for how long? Well, I was out of office. I had been term limited out in 2005 and I think it started to uh, grow around 2006 or seven. Right. Um, it was the last election cycle for uh, the mayor, I believe, and uh, the councilors that were getting ready to be term limited out. So I wanna say. I would say, cause it was before I decided to run for council. So I'm gonna say it was in 2006, sometime in 2006, and then to present time. Okay, so now we here we are, 2012, and this case is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the major charges that we used to get rid of uh, the chief of police was the mismanagement of the weed and seed grant money. Mm -hmm. Correct. What do you know about that? Well, following it, uh, I followed it on TV because obviously I, we have a show here that uh, we have to know council business, and listened very intently. Uh, to the things that were being said about this weed and seed mismanagement. And of course, people are very concerned with, with the money that comes into Methuen. We want to know that our officials and our department heads are taking good care of it and our tax dollars and where they're going. So I, I watched the programs, and, and as uh, the election, the last cycle of uh, elections took place, which, and I can't, what, 2006? Seven? Yeah. Um, that, yeah. It, it was an odd year anyway. Right. Um, I know that the sitting mayor had uh, opposition, or a candidate running, obviously, and that was Kathleen Corey Rami. And before you know it, there was a campaign going on, and then there was a, what appeared in the paper mysteriously, and I call it because I, don't, I still can't figure out how the Eagle Tribune decides what stories to put in and what's, what they don't. And all of a sudden, we have headline news, mismanagement of funds. Chief Solomon is being questioned. He, he did this, he did that, misappropriated. And, and they had a list, a laundry list, of all the wrong things that were done with this, with this fund. So obviously, we all followed the story because that's the only story we knew, is what we were reading in the paper. And before <laughs> you know it, uh, Chief is being fired, and that was my understanding was the main cause was the mismanagement of the weed and seed. And then things blossomed from there. Who he did business with, what was the conflict of interest, and obviously now it starts to grow. And the people are outraged, and it's festering, and it's nobody's able to get the real story, only what the Eagle Tribune is saying. And those that knew the behind the scenes things, um, were either keeping very quiet or they were letting things happen for whatever reason, Hector. We, we, who knows? Well, we know that the Weed and, uh, weed and Seed grant uh, was a big deal in the civil service. Yes. And it was also played a big part in this. But we also came across an, uh, an email that was sent from city officials over to the chief in regards to the findings of the Weed and Seed Correct. Grant. Do you have any I do. I, I, have, I have a memo. I've been carrying around this folder for years now, trying to get the word out when it could be, when, when it presented itself during our council meetings when I was lucky enough to serve with Councilor Papalato two years ago. 
and the terminology, I, I get lost because I don't know legal terms. I, I don't know a lot of that. So when we brought it forward on the floor, because of the way we brought it forward, not using the correct terminology. And, and we're not lawyers, Hector, so we shouldn't have to be uh, worrying about what we say on the council floor that we know legal terms. That was just so we got stonewall us. But you do have a legal department that works for the city council. Well, you think? That, that's part of this whole problem. Uh, it boils down to that's being part of this whole problem. Correct. Um, but yes, I have a memo, and the memo is very clear. It's a memo that was sent to the chief by our city accountant, Tommy Kelly, that commends the chief with his spending, his, his um, bookkeeping, and the fact that the single audit by Melanson and Heath who does our outside audits? Do they come in every year? They come year? in for the city. And okay, th and that's the same agency that the city has used for over, over 20, twenty years. years. And, and I had brought legislation up about that to try and get somebody else to come in every other year. Never happened. It's interesting to note that that particular organization found nothing wrong with the right. mismanagement. Nothing of wrong. Right. The auditors were very impressed with your records and backup information you provided them, and they thought Patricia Geruso was extremely helpful and very professional. Nice job with exclamation points. Wish I could say the same for, and there were two other departments that I won't, won't mention, mention right. but this was a memo sent to the chief. So the outside audit company commended him. Right. You need a reason to fire somebody. And when you have to go as deep as questioning where they purchase a pot for a vehicle, and it happens to be a company that the chief disclosed that his relatives happened to own, that was blown out of proportion. Listen, I don't even want to get into the Eagle Tribune thing there because I know how they report. I have documentation here that was never ever printed in the in the newspaper that they have. To that this I have. date, to this date, nothing's been printed in the Eagle Tribune from the court decision, well, which I think the city of Methuen, the taxpayers, the residents have the right to know that because not everybody can go online and read that decision. I think the Tribune should print that. That is correct for everybody. And, and we looked at at some of the documents that came from the court system as well that was used in, in the hearing, right. and it kind of indicates that this was a personal vendetta. A politically motivated issue. It most certainly was, and I stated that on two or three different occasions on a, in a council meeting when they wanted to indemnify the mayor, and I just felt as though you can't indemnify the mayor if it's a politically motivated case. Oh, no, no, they said no, that's, no. The court decision stated it. It stated it right out. The civil service findings stated it. All, you know, it, it's funny that if you look at all the cases that have been put before the courts over the Joe Solomon firing, we, the city, have lost every single appeal and decision up to this point, and somebody won't let it go. Jeannie and I know how little this would have cost us yep. last October. Yep. There was talks about a settlement yes. that could have been settled for, I think, $70,000, $75,000. Well, Hector, let me say this to you. On two or three different occasions, not in a council meeting, I have spoken to our solicitor. Oh, no, no, there is no agreement, there is no settlement. Nothing has been agreed upon. Well, come to find out, I guess it's really, we, we have the, uh, the proof that there was something written up. They didn't, uh, you know, go ahead with it because, again, somebody, I don't know whether it's a vendetta, I don't know whether it's hatred, but come on. The city of Methuen is the one the taxpayers are paying for this, actor. Let's let this go. You can't use this as a personal issue. And that's the way, and I'm just speaking, I'm speaking for myself, just to let everybody know here. I'm not speaking for any other counselor. I'm not speaking for former counselor Giuliano. This is my personal opinion. I've stated it before. The taxpayers are footing the bill, and it's a shame that it's still going on. Now, it's interesting because I'd be the first one to, to say that lawyers create billable hours for themselves. Oh, absolutely. In this case, it appears that 
the legal department that worked for the city council mm. created billable hours on the taxpayer's back. How, how is your legal department should be held accountable for all of this, especially where it was known early on that the, the mismanagement of the fund was not a le legitimate charge. That, well, that we went, didn't know that. That went by the wayside. Oh, you know yeah. what? That was used as the main reason why, I think. That's, my, that's only my opinion. Then other things grew from that. Okay, and I what I read in the paper now, they talk about very rarely now, on occasion, I said, on occasion, you will hear somebody throw out, well, gee, what happened to the weed and seed and the $170,000? But when you really think about it, it's the civil service, it's who got angry at who, who didn't do what. This weed and seed was the reason they used, and we lost. We lost. Then we have personal uh, attacks being made behind the scenes, okay? And when they're called to task and brought forward, the city lost, okay? When the city said, we didn't do anything personally. We did it in the scope of, of the job and, and wrong, we lost. I can't tell you how many cases we have lost right. with this Solomon issue. And finally, when Councilor Papalato and, and I heard wind that there was a verbal agreement of sorts that was going to be put on paper, and a, and a memo. Do you have it with you, Pat? I do. And an email went out from two attorneys, okay, from, from, a, from Chief Solomon's attorney to the solicitor, and it suggested that the chief and the mayor have come to some kind of terms, correct, and that the next step should be that the mayor and or the city council or someone call a meeting and get everybody together. And there was, if I recall, there was an executive session, but it was boycotted. Was there October well, twentieth? Yes, yes, that's correct. Well, when we get the memo, you need three people to call for an executive session. Correct, and I so, think it was yourself. Uh, Ms. Papalato and Larry, Larry Giordano. Correct. So Councilor we signed Giordano. it. It's right here. We, we asked our fellow counselors to sit down because we had reason to believe through talks and emails that we were close to coming to terms. But the problem was there was a meeting in this room on a Tuesday. And then two of the people are missing for a meeting on that room on a Thursday. And nobody wanted to sit in the same room. That was what the problem was. So Councilor Papalato and I went to our solicitor, sat in front of him and said, listen, we understand that there is something brewing. It's a matter of you getting everybody together. All right? I'll take care of it. I will do it. We called him three days in a row. Can't seem to get the mayor and the chief to work together. Yet the memo indicates we're ready to sit down. The mayor has asked the solicitor. The chief has agreed to do it. And we have somebody that's not bringing the parties together. So we call for an executive session. Well, let's just mention before that, mm -hmm. there was also somebody that was an interceding person that was trying to get them together also. Right, exactly. Besides her and I, asking the solicitor to please have them come in and sit down like gentlemen and see what you can't come to some type of an agreement, seeing that we had heard this. Before the three of us called for the executive session, it was up to the solicitor as far as my personal opinion is. He's the one that should have said, okay, everybody, we need to all get together. We're going to have an executive session. Let's vote. That never happened. And he and that's why the three of us had to do it. And he, you're meaning about the city solicitor who about does this work. memo. Yes, absolutely. And the city solicitor does work for the city council. He, they, he most certainly does. Well, I thought he did all yeah, these years. I'm still wondering. I'm I'm starting to, to wonder. Well, this has cost the taxes for the Methuen residents to be increased. No, each not yet. Year. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. We know not that yet. we haven't even gotten We haven't the settled bill yet. it yet now. But you know, let me just say this to the people of Methuen because you hear all the knocks and, and slaps that uh, Chief Solomon is getting, okay? 
People don't like them. People like them. That's fine. I think that's, you know, you have the right to your own opinion. If you don't like them, all well and good. If you like them, fine. The chief is here to stay now. We need to get past this. We need to move on. Methuen is sick of reading all about this in the paper. A lot of times I'm sitting as a city councilor, and that's where I got my information. And I really resent that. But anyway, let's move on. Methuen needs to move on from the Solomon. He's here. Let's settle at a fair settlement. We still have two federal cases that are uh, pending that he's going to go to court with. That Do could you know, have been taken care of. That could have been taken care of over all of this at a very, very inexpensive settlement. Now, who's going to be representing the city in, in those two remaining federal lawsuits? Our solicitor. So it will still be Peter McCullough. Yes. But he hasn't been able to win a case against the chief. Mm -hmm. Is this going to continue to be wasting taxpayer dollars, or should there be some type of accountability? I know you're no longer sitting as a current city councilor, but Ms. Papalato, I would ask you, um, he would be coming up for reappointment in, in January, January again. Is this something that the council is going to rub a stamp and just slide him right through, or well, Hector, is he going to be held accountable on behalf of the taxpayers? I will answer that not for the other city councils, because I can't, I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't even wanna think of what they may wanna do. Myself, come January, I will not vote to reappoint him. It'll be a three year appointment. He'll have a, a, a new contract in front of him. I'm sorry, I just, in my heart, I cannot reappoint this man. Now, wouldn't it be before getting to the January, doesn't the council have an option of maybe even bringing a motion for a vote of no confidence? I, I, yeah, we do, absolutely do. Would that I, be on the table for the citizens of the? Of I, the I don't know. Um, I would like to give the solicitor, in all due respect to him, the courtesy of putting him on notice that. I'm not going to vote for him. I mean, I have no problem speaking to him and telling him that, but if the other city councilors are thinking on the same lines, I think that they should bring it up at a council meeting um, and put him on notice so that come January, if in fact he is going to be not, uh, it, not reappointed, uh, that he's not surprised. I mean, I would give him that much of a courtesy. Would there be any conflict of interest with any of the current city councilors that are there now that should be recusing themselves before the actual vote of a no vote confidence or recusing themselves I, on voting for his I reappointment? I don't think that there's anybody um, on that council other than the chairperson because um, I, evidently there's a conflict of interest there because of, um, is it the Manasian attorney? Yeah, I believe that she has a sister, sister or a family works member works office. at the law firm. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the uh, our attorney has told her that none of these memos have uh, been addressed to her. It's been addressed to the vice chair, all except the last one, I believe it was. I don't know. I didn't get the memo because I wasn't, I wasn't there. But, but, but last year, this was not happening. Hector, we have October 20th, 2011. Right. We asked as a city council, okay, three of us, for our fellow councilors to come in and talk about this. Right. Because exactly. rumor had it that we were close, or the chief and the yes. mayor were close. And we couldn't get a, a, a definitive answer from I anybody. I called the mayor in his office, and I said, Mayor Manzi, and you know that I very rarely spoke to Mayor Manzi because of the, the games. Yes, the I don't, issues, I, right. Okay, and I know Mayor Manzi. I sat next to him for six years as a city councilor. And I said, I understand that you're close to a... Uh, settlement. A settlement. I said, and the request was, if we call an executive session, then we could go in and discuss what has been discussed between you and the chief. He said, that's right, counselor. I said, if I call one, and I can't use the exact words I used on the phone with him, but I said, <laughs> if I call an executive session and you don't show up, and then I went into uh, my explanation uh, as to how disappointed I would be. So we called it, it's right here, it's official. Called for an executive session. Somebody 
called six other counselors and told them not to come to the meeting. All right? And that was the meeting that was boycotted Correct. with the president. Correct. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. And in that meeting, we were going to be handed an agreement, okay, that was prepared for us to look at. It would have dropped the federal case. It would have given the chief back his, his contract. It would have cost the city $60,000 with an additional 15 for lawyer's fees. That would have been it. And it would have gotten rid of the federal case that is now pending. It's in writing, okay? All that had to be done was the solicitor give us this copy when we went into executive to session. To look it over. Because, and, and excuse me, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, Pat. Yes, but you do. In, in the agreement, <laughs> there were things in there that we could have tweaked. Two things I didn't like in the agreement, okay? Um, and and I've, I've told Chief Solomon right to his face I didn't agree with it. I have no problem. But for $75,000, and we could have, as a body, tweaked over the rest of that contract. Put it we away. We could have setted it and put, put it, away. it to sleep. No court, no more No court, more federal no, cases. Nothing. And we had a solicitor. Okay. Excuse me. I, I'm going to take that back. I stand corrected. I don't know who called six other counselors. But I have to say this to you, Hector. We, the council, hires the, solic the solicitor and the accountant, okay, to give us the, the things that we need as tools. Ultimately, it's the city councilors that when I call an executive session, I have never not shown up at a meeting. Right. Never. And I was on council for eight years. Yep. Now, Councilor Papalato and I refused to go into one of the executive sessions because we knew it was BS. All right, and we had documentation that it was after the fact that we were being called into the meeting, which we didn't want to go in. And to this day, they won't release those minutes. But that's okay because the city ended up paying a grand amount of money to another case that could have been fixed if it was done properly, but it wasn't. So that was the only time, but I was at that meeting. I just said, no, I wouldn't go into executive That's session. That's all you had to do. These people did not show not up. Not even show up. We have, and three of them are still, uh, we have the mayor sitting in the corner office, we have the chair and the vice chair that could have settled this now. Now, when I read in the paper, okay, we want to settle this. What, after the, after the horse left the barn? Which Thank was you very much. And the people that are saying they want to settle it had an opportunity October. And, you, and I never can, showed up at a meeting. And I can guarantee you one thing, and I hope that we have a lot of taxpayers looking at this show today. I will guarantee you one thing. It's going to be more than $75,000. It's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's without the federal cases. And I don't want to hear, well, we didn't know. We couldn't. You know what? Number one, the biggest thing was, just out of courtesy to your fellow counselors, go to that meeting. Now, and I'll tell don't you, know that you didn't want to go in. Let me tell exactly. you who was in that building that night. Councilor Papalato, myself, Councilor Giordano, Chief Solomon, who was ready to sign or to, to sit there and wait to see what the council was going to come back with. I believe one of the reporters. Yes. Uh, Mayor Manzi came off the elevator, looked into the Great Hall, went into his office, and the door got locked. We know that. We saw him. And the Never, solicitor was down the other end. And the, the solicitor end. was in his office down the other end. And the four of us, the five of us, are in the Great Hall like Dumbos waiting for the rest of the... Now, we knew they weren't coming because we heard word that they were lobbying or whatever they were doing. They weren't going to show up because they believed that this case could be won. Well, look at what we're looking at today. Well, let me just say this to you. I don't believe, and you, I, I think you're calling it the wrong way. We weren't the Dumbos. I'm sorry. Okay. They can say whatever they want to say. They now have to go and settle with Chief Solomon because he's here. He's here to stay, everybody. Okay. They have to now settle on an agreement that the mayor and, and, and chief comes up with, okay, which is going to be more than this agreement we have in front of us. So the taxpayers are paying a lot more than what they could have settled back a year ago. 
So I don't feel as though that I'm a Dumbo, and I don't think okay. that you are either. And well. we also know that Mayor Zani had voted for a vote of no confidence. That's right. Against the, the chief. chief we also yeah, know yes. that the chairperson also voted that same way. Mm -hmm. Is that, is, it, you know, is that an indication that everything's divided here? That the council is divided and they're no, targeting? No, the council was divided two years ago, the last go round. Yeah, with the, Mayor Manzi. Are, are they divided today? Of Only course. you're going to find that out. Yeah. Yeah. When you ask the question, yeah. when it's put on the floor, do you have confidence in your solicitor when knowingly we have, do and you have the same documentation, right. Hector, as I do, all right? And these are, these are court, these are stamped, these are official documents, they're on the record. That is correct. Okay? <laughs> and it, it's, not, it's not for you to interpret, it's in plain English. Yeah. Other than the whereas's and everything else, it's evident and it's obvious. And according to the court ruling, the court ruling kind of indicated that the city has used this type of argument in the past and basically in my interpretation of the ruling was the court says this is crap why are you bringing it and wasting our time with it because i think we have people that don't want to now let go it's I, now I about don't winning it either and winning at what cost hector the taxpayer dollar mm -hmm. i went back on council for one of the reasons and this was one of the reasons because you know what it was just the co I knew what the cost was going to end up being if it wasn't settled. I knew it was done. It wasn't done in a professional way. Indemnification, we got crucified in the paper because we didn't indemnify a political figure. When the court in the civil service ruling showed that it wasn't a political, it, it wasn't a on-the-job decision. It was a personal issue. Can and I'm indemn not indemnifying on a personal issue. And you voted against the indemnification. I voted against and it. And you yes. did as I think well. It was a well, nice we got an editorial. There was an editorial that slammed us about that. But now you have the judge's uh, decision that states it. This was not done under the scope of his uh, being a mayor. It was a personal issue. It was a, a, a so we're a indemnifying issue. on a personal issue. That's pretty scary, because I know what the taxes are. And, and the argument on the floor is always, you don't want to lose services. That's Hell no, baloney. we don't want to lose services. Yep. And we've been very good in this community providing services. This is about the extra. Where are you getting the extra from? To pay for a suit that could have been settled for two figures, and now we're up to three, middle. You know, it, it just, it makes no sense. And nobody wants to all sit in the same room. And that was one of our, our arguments. Put them in the same room. Why aren't we sitting in the same room? I tell you, and this story, it, it appears it's not going to go away. I mean, next week we will have an attorney come in to interpret the court ruling. We have the three current city councilors, and we will be asking them those same questions. And, and I will say this, Hector, that... There are rumblings that I hear going around the city that, oh, yeah, uh, we need to put the solicitor on notice. Oh, yeah, you, you need to do this. Uh, you're on thin ice. When it comes right down to it, there's the big, there's the big question, what's going to happen? And we will... I've stated my case. I don't care who knows it or doesn't know it. I just cannot, in good conscience, come January, reappoint this man. Well, we'll see what the rest of the council say and the other attorney that will come in. We want to thank you for coming thank in to you, talk Hector. about this thank particular you, issue. We did get a lot of response from constituents in Methuen that wanted answers to this. Yes, and hopefully yes, we'll and I, I get them also. Great. Well, thank we want you. to thank you for coming in. We want to thank you at home for watching. You've been watching Behind the Scenes. Join us next time as we go behind the scenes to ask the tough questions, bring you their responses, we let you decide.